Greetings, JW. I'm going to reply to your comment. I did a brief thing right here. Um, you're asking about, you like the idea of the box with free Bibles. I don't do the Patreon thing. I don't put money on the internet like that. Well, honestly, you don't need to. Depending on where you're living, um, I was in the middle of the city and I had a lot of boxes and I go through 20 bucks a month, $22 a month for a case of Bibles and go around and put them in there. Now I'm in the country and it doesn't really cost anything. You know, I go to the Dollar Tree and I buy one Bible at a time. You know, I might buy a half a dozen and that'll last me a couple of months because people out here where I am just don't take them. I don't ever have a lot of money anyways. Well, like I said, you don't really don't need any. I still like the idea of a Bible box, though. Well, the Bible box is expensive. I'm just going to tell you, uh, unless you build it yourself, you're looking at about two to $300 having it shipped. But then it's ready to go. You just have to paint it. And, yeah, it's waterproof. I mean, it's weathered like you like crazy. I mean, your books are safe in there. If you build it yourself, you know, unless you're an expert carpenter, I just prefer to buy the box and put it up. If people from different towns and states did that, that would be pretty cool. On this idea, I have a couple of questions. All right, I don't know where you're from, JW, but in where I am in the Midwest, these bi they're not Bible boxes. They're called Little Free Libraries. And you can go to littlefreelibrary.com, and it shows you where all of the registered boxes are. There's a lot more than just the registered boxes, but they're free libraries. If you have books, you put them in the thing, and then, you know, whoever wants a book can go take one out, and, you know, you, you put more books in there, and that's just how it works. Are those Bibles from the Dollar Tree KJV? Yes. Where did you place your box? I placed it on the sidewalk. Well, close to the sidewalk. Um, on your property or a public place? Well, here's the thing. I have them on my property right now, the one that I put up. If I start up a Patreon and I'm getting funding to maybe put up more boxes, and I would just ask people in the neighborhood and in the area, do you mind if I put this box up here? I'll take care of it, and I'll pay for the whole thing. Do you just mind if I put it up? And we'll see what they say. I Whether or not that's a really a worthwhile proposition in my particular area right now, I don't know. I'm going to say probably not. Um, the box has only been up for six months, and it's wintertime now. And in Minnesota, we're sitting under two feet of snow. It's below zero all the time. Nobody is out walking around looking at books. We'll see what happens in the summertime and the springtime. And if there's a general interest and a general motivation, and we don't just have Bibles in the box, okay? We have kids' books. I have some Kurt Vonnegut stuff in there. I mean, all basically the books that I'm done with, are they're just going in the box. And plus, people will give us books that we can put in the box. It's not just a specific Bible thing. It's just something good for the community. If public... Then did you have to get it cleared through the local city government? Um, I probably should have supposed to have gotten a permit to put the thing up, but, eh. I mean, I looked at it like, you know, if they want to complain about it, then I'll take it down. But, eh. Um, depending on where you do it. If you're doing it on your own property and it's two feet off the sidewalk, that's basically your property. They really can't. It's basically a birdhouse. You know, I mean, you can't say it's a structure. All right, it's basically a birdhouse, big birdhouse. And there's only going to be limitations on how far it is off of the sidewalk and things like that, depending on where you're at. I live in a pretty socialist empire republic in Minnesota, and I haven't had any problems. Did I get it cleared through the local government, private business property, or how does that work? Well, pretty much you just put it up and see if somebody complains. That's my recommendation. And if you own your property, as long as you put it in a place that's completely off of anything that any government has any jurisdiction over, you know, all off the sidewalks and all that stuff, you can put it anywhere. 
I have mine out on the sidewalk. We have a stop sign out on that sidewalk. So I put it two feet off of the sidewalk and I just plow it out. And, you know, if I was going to do it farther than that, if somebody complained about it, what I would do is I would just pick up the box and I would move it four or five feet into my property. And then I would put down a walkway so that people could walk up onto my property and, and go dig in the box if the city really had that much to complain about. But I live in a small town, all right? I don't know what your situation is. I'm going to say that when I started this, okay, when I started this, it was because I wanted to do something for God and I had no money. I had really nothing coming in. And I'm like, you know, I can afford 20 bucks to buy a case of Bibles. There's all these boxes um, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and their suburbs. There's little library boxes all over the place. And I don't have a car. So I'm walking all over and I'm walking the dog and I'm doing this and I'm seeing all these boxes and I'm like, well, I can stuff Bibles in here. And that's what I did. Stuff Bibles in all over the place. And I would check them at least a couple of times a week. And a lot of times the Bibles are gone. And then I got to go back and restock. So I'd restock a couple of times a month. Um, some boxes are more popular than others, but I just happened to be walking by and I just, you know, it was really popular. So if you live in a bigger town where you see these boxes up all over the place, or you could be the first one in your town, like me, there is no other little free library box in my town. I am the only guy. If you want a free book, you got to come to me. <laughs> so I, I hope that answers your question. Um, you, you, unless you're in a, a town with like a few hundred thousand people or something like that, though, you really can't expect the world of it. And you, you can, the biggest thing is putting the box up and that costs some money and you can do one yourself. I've seen some pretty janky ones out there that people just kind of patch them together yourself. But in my particular climate where I live, I have to buy something that's very well professionally made so that the books don't get ruined in the inside. I have 30 mile an hour winds here. Um, it's, it's generally below zero overnight. Um, 30 mile an hour winds combined with rain slash snow is pretty rough on stuff. So we've got a professional box done. It's all, you know, watertight and everything like that. And it was, it was like $200 to buy, maybe a little more than that. And then, it, but it was like $75 to ship it because it, I think it came from like Holland or something. It came from another country. So yeah, if you're more interested in that, um, search Little Free Libraries. I do not have the SKU number for Dollar Tree uh, for the Bibles that I get, but they are the ones that you're just going to find in the store if you have Dollar Tree around. If you order them off the internet, you'll have to pay shipping. So I don't even know if that's worth it at that point. I pick them up from the store and I pay taxes on uh, the Bibles, but I don't pay shipping. The biggest thing though is what I mean about vetting them is there are certain key verses where you can tell what translation they come from. And it's not necessarily a translation. It's who was doing the printing and what manuscript they got. And like most of this stuff comes from China. Okay. If you open it up in the first line it says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth without a plural. It's an accurate translation. There are a couple other verses you can check, and I don't know them off the top of my head. But that's the first thing that I do anytime I look at a KJV is open it up. And if it says heavens and the earth, I know, drop that one. Go for something else. And this one, I think, um, I think its part number is 150907. And it, this is one that comes from... Kappa Books, LLC, printed in the USA. And I could read the, the SKU number. I don't think that would make much of a difference. But what the heck, we'll read the SKU. 88908-26000 is the SKU number for it. And I do have the part number somewhere in my, in my emails when I order new Bibles. But like I said, I haven't had to do that in probably a year now. I just buy them one off like half dozen at a time when I'm in Dollar Tree in the in the town. So yeah, by all means, I think it's a great idea. 
if you want to do that, it doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, if you can't afford a box, buy the Bibles and find a box. Go to littlefreelibrary.com and it has the Google map of where all these boxes are. If you got a car, you can go up and go drop them off. With that, I'm out of here. God bless.